Hello kindred spirits and welcome to your soulful seven reading for today. So soul filling messages that you are meant to take with you for the next seven to 10 days for the next week ahead. So as per usual, nothing is prepared for the reading today. There will be three groups and the links to those three groups will be in the description bar below. So if you need to pause the video at this time to determine to meditate on which group has your message in it, please do so now. Otherwise, we are just going to get right into the reading. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your soulful message. So your soul filling messages for the next seven to 10 days, the next week ahead. Okay. So the first message that we have is the koala spirit is our guiding energy. So this idea of spirit has a plan. Messages that I'm receiving right away for you is this idea of trusting in your destined path, trusting in your destiny and understanding that um, your energy, your spirit in combination with the universe set forth your destined path for you. So getting in alignment with that plan will help you to find more focus, more purpose, and help you to ground and align yourself um, with positive energy that is going to benefit you through, you know, your life and in the long run. So this idea of, you know, trusting in the universe to um, manifest the life that you are looking for, that you want, that you desire, is um, really going to be your focus for the week is again getting in alignment in harmony with that plan um, if you are not already so then we have a red jasper and this message here is this idea of taking action so once you get into alignment with the plan once you know what is on your path what's, what is your de what your destiny consists of it's this idea of then making moves and moving forward towards um, that path and that destiny. Um, so this idea of taking action is going to be um, very prevalent this week. And then we have Hermitite, which the guiding energy for this card is this idea of grounding yourself. So I feel like the message here is to ground yourself in your spirituality and your spiritual connection because once you have that um, grounded spiritual energy there will be no swaying you from your path you will know without a shadow of a doubt the direction that you should be headed and anything outside of that um, you know outside of that knowing without knowing sort of thing uh, will just not fly with you so grounding yourself in your spirituality in your spiritual walk and again accepting nothing less than um, the energy and the direction that you know is for you okay so we also have i can change my thoughts i think this is so critical because our thoughts really are the first step <laughs> towards either prosperity or devastation um, our thoughts can either take us to a really high and enlightened place or our thoughts can keep us in the dumps keep us in the dark keep us in fear keep us in worry and anxiety um, in poor physical health and mental health as well so really just taking ownership of your thoughts and um, the power that you have in controlling what your thoughts consist of is a really good action to take as you move forward this week especially if you find yourself being a little bit more pessimistic than some and then we also have i have a higher purpose which i feel like is very much solely connected with the message that spirit has a plan 
you know, uh, and trusting in that plan. And again, getting to know what that purpose is. Like it's one thing to say you have a higher purpose. It's another thing to live in it, to discover it, to seek it out, and then to um, continue on that path to, you know, whatever that purpose is for you. And then we have, I deserve respect, which could not be a more truer statement out there. And I feel like respect goes many different directions, not just from other people, but also of yourself. You know, respecting yourself, respecting your journey, respecting where you are on your journey and um, demanding respect from others as well, that they respect you, they respect your boundaries um, or they just have no place in your current moment. So just understand that as well. That there's nothing wrong with um, setting really strong boundaries right now, especially for the next seven to 10 days that that could potentially also be a focus for some of you as well is setting those strong boundaries. So we have Empress energy coming into the conversation, which really talks about beauty. It talks about abundance. It also talks about foresight and planning. Uh, I really am loving the Empress energy, especially after talking about respect and boundary setting. Because once we are able to set boundaries, then we can focus on our prosperity and our abundance without having people, you know, people are going to test the boundaries, of course, but like without having people completely running over, you know, our boundaries and keeping us off center. So um, really just taking ownership of our ability to set ourselves up to be abundant and our ability to um, hold ourselves to a higher standard and those around us to a higher standard is a really important message moving forward for the week for you group number one and then we also have the ace of feathers so this is our air energy so mental clarity and foundation this is talking about new thoughts or new ideas coming into your life again it is a raw unadulterated thoughts um, inspiration and um, this idea of being clear in your mind space which I feel like is very much so connected to you changing your your thoughts I feel like once you make take action to change your thoughts and get in alignment with your purpose that there's going to be clarity instead of clutter in your mind space and it's going to provide a really solid foundation for you and then we have the magician which is about manifestation willpower and creation it's a very masculine energy which i feel like is or divine masculine energy which is connected to our ace of feathers um energy as well so what you focus on is what you manifest so make sure that you are focusing on what you desire what you want to see come to fruition and not what you don't want to see come to fruition and what you hate about this and don't like about that and you know, that sort of mental um, negativity that sometimes we get into um, because of whatever the reason. But the message here is to focus on growth, focus on um, what you desire, what you want to see, and manifesting that energy instead of, you know, the negativity and allowing that to take uh, a front row seat in your life and in your mind space because again you can change your thoughts you have the power to do that that is definitely a message that we are taking forth with us for this weekend and in the future so we have chamomile and the energy that chamomile talks about is this idea of soothing so I feel like soothing kind of talks about especially for us go-getter types us you know, magicians, those of us who are really focused on manifesting the life that we want and manifestation in general, that there is a time to manifest and there's also a time to rest, to relax. And I feel like that's kind of what Chamomile is talking about is this idea of soothing, this idea of resting, this idea of having a place and or a space in our minds and in the physical world where we can go to soothe ourselves, where we can go to rest and to relax. Um, 
because of that is also important and that is a part of grounding ourselves is um you know finding that place of peace that place of um escape the oasis if you will even as we get in alignment and pursue our destined path we still need kind of like that oasis um as well so so group number one these are the overall messages that we had for you today and now we are going to add in our soul truth questions to the conversation so we're going to add in some questions for you to meditate for you to journal on throughout the next seven to ten days um just kind of giving you a little bit of a focus for the week or some homework if you will to encourage you to continue to nurture your spirit and your soul for the next week and then we will meet again next week and do the same thing right <laughs> all right so the first question where can i ask for more help in my life so i feel like for those of us who find it difficult to ask for help that could be a question that you know you take with you I will show you the back of the card. I forgot to do that. Just so you can pause and read if you need to do that. Just gives you some actions to take as well in order to ask for more help. <sighs> we all need help. You know, I feel like oftentimes many of us, like 99.9% .9 of us, <laughs> are willing to be helpful, are willing to help others. Um, but with everything, there is balance necessary. And as we give, we must also be willing to take. And I know for some of us, me in particular, I'm triggered. Um, asking for help is really difficult for me. So that would definitely be a question that I would probably end up taking with me on one of these weeks. Um, I feel like it's also about keeping people around you that you feel comfortable asking for help from. Um, and even if you do have people around you that are willing to help, sometimes we just struggle asking for help. So our second question, what else could this mean? I actually really kind of like this card. So I'm going to turn it over. I feel like it really talks about interpretation and interpreting um, situations in multiple different ways and not just one way, especially if that way is like negative or limiting. There are always multiple ways to look at every situation. Our first reaction is usually rooted in our fears and limiting beliefs. This is so incredibly true and I have a little story to go with it. Um, I was teaching this semester at the college level and I had one of my students, um, so I was teaching like a, it was kind of a lab, like a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of, um, it's a kind of a creative, more one-on-one, -on -one, more like a guidance, like you're guiding your students um, and really focus on guiding their thinking and stuff like that. And I had one student that didn't want to meet with me one day and my initial thought was all of these things things right so my initial was thought like oh they don't want to meet with me because you know I'm a woman I'm this I'm that and I'm just like putting all of these thoughts into someone's head that just probably did not exist and as after I kind of thought right thoughts happen quicker than than the wind blows and after that happened I kind of like toned myself back it was a mental moment of clarity and I was like you don't know what this person is thinking. Why would you think that this is what they're thinking? Have their actions supported you thinking that about them? And the answer was no. Like they did absolutely nothing to, you know, and I am very intuitive person. I vibe energy really hard from people. And I did not vibe that energy from this person. It was my own insecurities, you know, it was my own thinking, my own fears, all of this stuff that ended up manifesting in that moment and I had to like rewind myself back and be like, this person probably didn't want to meet with you in reality because they didn't have anything to meet with you about. <laughs> and
And that was probably more true than any of the other things that I thought about. So really, you know, not taking everything for face value. You know, sometimes it's if it's a gut thing, if it's an intuition thing, that's one thing. But sometimes our mind space can trick us into thinking things that are not actually reality. So just think about what else things could mean, especially if it triggers you or makes you feel bad or makes you look poorly on someone else. Um, really try to dig into what else it could mean because you might be a little off on that. So anyway, meandering, the final question, am I focused on what I want most? And I feel like I said this when the magician card came up, this idea of focusing, focusing your mental, your mind space on, we had a lot about like mind, focusing on mind and your thoughts in this reading. So this idea of focusing on what you want to come true and not what you do not want or not like, but focusing on what you do want and what you do like. What you focus on grows and what you focus on consistently grows. I would, I would add consistently to that. So thinking one positive thought isn't enough. You have to continue to think positively, continue adding positivity to your life, to your world, so that you can manifest a really beautiful life that you want to live. So group number one, these are the messages that I have channeled for you today. I certainly hope this was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd love to have you part of Kendra family if you're not already a part. Drop a comment and let me know down below if something resonated with you, as well as um, uh, connecting with me on Facebook if you are so inclined to do that. I know everybody doesn't have a Facebook, but that's really where I do most of my connection, my connecting, my regular connecting. I do random one card readings. I, you know, post on there when I get new decks in or what not um just kind of that's my primary communication channel if you will and make sure also to check out my etsy shop if you're so inclined to do so i curate content there all the time to help you on your spiritual life journey all the way from personal readings to messages you need to hear to just other sorts of journaling and other you know things like that just content in general to help you on your spiritual walk. So thank you so much, beautiful soul, for your time and energy to stay. And I will see you in an upcoming reading. Bye. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your soulful seven reading, soul filling messages that you are meant to take with you for the next seven to ten days. The are, these are timeless readings. So whenever you are finding this video, there is a message here that is meant for you. So we're going to go ahead and give our guiding deck a shuffle. What messages do we have for group number two? Guiding energy. What is our guiding energy? Chuck and chunks. Okay. All right. So we have, ooh, B spirit. Just love when B spirit pops up. Sweet results await. I feel like just right off the bat that your hard work, your dedication, uh, especially if you're working, especially if you've been working diligently on something, um, that the fruits of that labor are coming for you. <laughs> they are in the works. And I feel like the message here is just like patience there. Um, I feel like those of you who have been in collaboration with others working on a project together, something of the sort um, that again, the fruit from that labor will manifest or it's on its way so that's exciting and then we have calendula and the energy off of our calendula is this idea of a brightening up it really reminds me of sun energy 
here as well. So this idea of um, just positivity, high energy, um, brightening up any situation. Good news always brightens up any any situation, right? Um, positive thinking also and optimism do so as well. Finding peace in a challenging time does. Um, and, you know, joy as well. And that comes from the inside out. And then we have Samfire and the message that I'm receiving from Samfire is this idea of adventure. I feel like this could be talking for some of you that you've been on an adventure and the uh, results of that adventure are coming to fruition. I'm also feeling with adventure that um, fire energy this idea of going out on an adventure and it could be a spiritual journey sojourn adventure or it could be a literal like leave your house and go somewhere travel somewhere um do something that you've been interested in maybe haven't done or haven't done in a while this idea of kind of just getting out of your comfort zone and um discovering and enjoying life we have the Knight of Shells, Charm and Passion are some of the energies of our Knight of Shells. I feel like a focus on, well, I feel like the Knight of Shells could definitely be talking about, especially in co combination with the Samphire and Calendula and even the Beast Spirit. This could be a very positive um love message for some of you and so this idea of an offer of love this idea of an adventure of love especially those of you again this is a love kind of a love vibe i'm getting right off the bat here this idea of you know especially if you've been say working on yourself improving yourself physically spiritually mentally and um you know, thinking more positive thoughts and brightening up the way that you are working on your manifestation. I feel like the adventure of love is um, something that is very possible for some of you and is on the way. If not, the Knight of Shells could certainly be talking about um, taking action when it comes to something that you are passionate about something that you're interested in, something that is related to creativity and or even spirituality. So taking action and making moves on um, something that is connected to or related to creativity and spirituality. I feel like it could also be, it almost gives me like two energy, which our number two is the... Um, the number two is the diplomat of numerology. So this idea of using charm and charisma and the ability to pull together multiple, you know, differing independent elements to get them to work in harmony with each other in order to accomplish a common good. So this idea of, you know, um, charm and diplomacy to, um, get what you want out of a situation is also very prevalent i feel like connected to the b spirit it's this idea of getting something done using um using a more gentle more like charismatic and charming approach rather than like fire energy and like pushing through like fire or earth energy where you're just like pushing through and just really trying to like stomp it out or get it done or you know forcing something to be accomplished like a softer more subtle more like behind the scenes type of approach is actually going to be more successful so then we have the eight of acorns so that is fire energy and our eight of acorns really just talks about energy. It talks about results. And we're talking about in the B spirit there that that um, message of 
results, right? Sweet results awaiting or being present. Um, so I feel like the eight of acorns is really giving you a giving you the energy that you need to like push things a little bit further. So if you're feeling drained, if you're feeling exhausted, that eight of acorns energy is really kind of that extra little push of energy to accomplish whatever you're going after right now. And then we have the chariot. Discipline and determination is the focus of our chariot's energy. I feel like our chariot energy is also about direction as well. Um, before you go on your adventure, making sure that you have a plan, you have a direction that you're headed, um, and then having the kind of discipline and determination to push through. I feel like the chariot also talks about routines and making sure that you're developing strong routines um, that are focused on results, right? Giving you the result that you want or need. And also understanding that the thing that you do consistently is the thing that grows, um, is the thing that manifests. So it's not only about um, having the energy and doing whatever it is once, it's about consistency. Um, so I feel like in general, just like with the B spirit being the focus, that this week is really about basically like taking the steps and doing what you need to do in order to see the results happen. So I don't feel like you're at the beginning. I'm feeling like you're towards the end, but there are still some things. There's some, you know, there's still some work to be done, some focus to be had, some energy to put into the situation. There is, you know, still some diplomatic uh, elements that need to take place here. And that's what I feel like the focus is. Did I call you group one? You're group two. I don't know. That's fine. And I'm messing up stuff. <laughs> I am connected. I love that. And I feel like that's very much so connected to that energy, that watery energy. But this idea of connection, connectivity, um, is very primary to the conversation about getting those results done. And I feel like I would even stretch it to say um, connected as in um, you are the connection as well. But with that Knight of Cups being like the two energy that I was vibing. Um, and we have the Gemini energy presence in this card as well. So air energy, again, making connections with words and with thoughts and communication um, is going to be very important for the next week. And then we have, I deserve a respect, setting strong boundaries and making sure that not only that you're setting, you're setting the boundaries, that, but that people are also respecting the boundaries that you are putting in place. Alrighty. I love it. I am connected. I love it. I love being connected. Being connected is great. Okay, and we have Chrysocola. Start fresh. So I feel like this is connected to thoughts. So again, I feel like we're on like almost like a final leg or we're coming to the end or the conclusion of something. Um, but there again, there's still effort work and energy needing to be put into it. And I feel like if you kind of hit a brick wall when it comes to your thoughts, um, I feel like the message here is this idea of kind of starting over, clearing your mind, taking a deep breath, taking a walk, um, clearing your space. With, in relationship to connectivity and being connected, I feel like there's a strong con like spiritual like a spiritual connection um, as well. And I feel like the message with the Chrysocola is this idea of kind of like starting over, starting from scratch, scrapping out everything that you've thought, everything that you've put together, and kind of starting from a fresh perspective, a fresh place, so that you can kind of 
think outside the box, if you will, especially if you've been in something for a long period of time. And then we have the Lapidolite, Recall Your Dream. So I feel like there are definitely uh, messages from spirit connected to your dream space, your, your, you know, your sleep life. And um, just to be mindful of that dream journal, if you're not already, um, just putting that in place. So you can um, be paying attention to those dreams because the message here is that um, spirit will be connecting with you through your dreams. Okay. All right. So those are the overall messages that we had for you, group two. Now we're going to be adding our questions to the conversation. Um, so you can select one of these questions to take with you, to meditate on, to journal through for the week. Um, or you can also <laughs> take some of the other messages forward to journal on and meditate on as well. But these are kind of just additional little messages or questions that you can take with you um, specifically for you to focus on for the next seven to 10 days. So the first question, am I consistently showing up? I feel like I mentioned this also already in our reading, but this idea that what you focus your energy on consistently is what you accomplish, is what you manifest, so. Consistency is king. And then the second question, am I apologizing for my truth? I love when this one comes up and you felt triggered by that. This is probably a really good question for you to take with you for the week. What part of you is apologizing for your truth and why? So courage is contagious. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot of reasons why we might feel a way about living our truth and being true to ourselves and our messages and all of that. So if you find yourself apologizing constantly or feeling guilty for following your truth and, you know, even if that means losing people, um, then they weren't meant to be there in the first place. You know, if, if part of the requirement to be in their space is for you to give up your truth or to su um, suppress your truth, then you're not meant to be in that place and they're not meant to be in your place, in your space. So just bear that in mind as you go along on the journey. And the third question, how can I infuse more self-love and compassion into my daily life? Oh, there is some, some really good points down there. If your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. I love that. Yeah, I feel like in a lot of cases we're willing to forgive others and to extend grace to others, but we forget to do that for ourselves. And, you know, it's just important to do because we're human too, right? We're on this journey. We're living this human experience and learning along the way and, figure, and trying to figure out what we need to do in order to have an abundant and beneficial life so you know being kind and gentle to ourselves is should be a part of that journey and i feel like that's definitely a part of the message today for you group number two so these are the messages that i have channeled for you today i certainly hope this was helpful for you if it was make sure to drop a comment down below let me know what resonated click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as liking my Facebook page and checking out my Etsy shop where I curate content there to help you on your spiritual and your life journey. So thanks again, beautiful soul, for your time and energy today. And I will see you in an upcoming reading. Bye. Hello, group number three, and welcome to your Soulful 7 reading. So excited. 
So again, these are soul filling messages that you're meant to take with you forward for the next seven to 10 days for the next week ahead. These are timeless readings. So whenever you are finding this message, it is meant for you. So let's go ahead and give our guiding energy a shuffle. What is the guiding energy for our conversation today? Guiding energy, group number three. I take too many cards sometimes. <laughs> what is the guiding energy? Okay. Snake spirit, time to heal. I absolutely love the snake spirit healing. So this idea, you know, the snake sheds its skin when it is growing. When it outgrows its skin, it sheds its skin. And, you know, healing, growth, it's really all connected here. So I feel like the message here that it is time for you to shed your skin because you are growing. You're growing out of your current situation. You're growing, you're growing out of your you know, your current state and your current place. And it is time for you to move on into another stage. I also feel a death and rebirth type of vibe from a snake spirit. So um, this idea, again, of leaving behind, right? The snake doesn't come back to the skin that is shed um, to try to squeeze back into it. No, it continues on. It, con it leaves it behind and it moves forward on with life so i feel like that is the message here it's time for you to transition to another place another stage but in order to get there you have to do some healing you know there's some healing that needs to be had there um okay so we have the shadow so the message is here with our shadow energy is this idea of self-empowerment and ambition so with this, I'm getting the message that your healing lies within you, that you have the power to heal yourself, to find wholeness in your life. And um, you just, you know, have to just take the initiative and make a decision that that is what you want to do. And so we have the Knight of Crystals and our crystal energy is our earth energy. And our Knight of Crystals really talks about endurance and determination. It also, to me, talks about, like, there's a message here about being careful of overworking yourself. And also um, that action, that physical health is also a part of your healing journey, that it's not just mental health or spiritual health, it's also physical health. So some of you could have physical ailments and or be manifesting um, silently physical ailments because of other things that are going on. So just being, just being conscious of your physical health and being conscious of the consequences of not paying attention to you know, how much work you're doing, making sure you know, you're not getting enough sleep, all of this sorts of stuff. So just being mindful of how much work and effort that you're putting into things and making sure that you're also putting work and effort into your physical health and physical well-being as well. What I also see in the Knight of Crystals is this idea, like this idea of endurance is really, to me, speaks about... Um, it really talks about persistence and you know that you're not going to just give up when some when one thing doesn't go your way you're going to keep on persisting you're going to keep on moving forward you're going to keep on taking actions in order to accomplish your ultimate goal our knight of crystals is also steady and understands that it takes time to get a sustainable outcome so healing true healing is not something that's going to happen overnight you know, our crystal energy suggests even years that this could take in order to get, again, a sustainable outcome. So just bearing that in mind as well. And then we have our shaman, which is about divine wisdom and spiritual power. And I really love that in this conversation. Um, so our shaman energy is the hero fonts energy. I feel like our shaman could be... Uh, talking about or connecting with you know you connecting with a spiritual um 
guide to help you on your journey. Um, our shaman energy also talks about, you know, having a bigger view of a situation. So we're looking at, you know, we have our eagle here or a falcon. I think it's, I think it's an eagle though. Um, but this, you know, the idea of a bird being in the sky and it having the view, the lay of the land, like you being able to see things from a larger perspective. And that is actually what happens when you are connected spiritually. You have a more grand view of um, your situation, of your life, of your path, of the options that you have in life. Um, so, you know, getting in alignment spiritually, getting help if you need to, and just really talks about the power of you know being spiritually connected and um that the wisdom in that and the prosperity that can come with that by seeing what needs to happen and again having a focus on what then you see being able to focus in on that and move forward from there so we have iolites and the message that we are seeing here in iolite is this idea of shifting your money mindset. So if you have a limiting belief about money, how you can get it, how to obtain it, and how to maintain it, I feel like the message here in the Iolite is to expand your belief system because what you believe, what you think, is what you manifest so if you say oh it's really hard to get money or it's hard for me to earn money or it's hard for me to um you know get a dollar or whatever you say those things you believe those things then that is what will manifest but if you say it is easy for me to make money it is easy for me to um have prosperity and to have financial stability then that is what the energies are going to then move towards so be mindful of your thoughts especially when it comes to money all right and then we have celestite which is soothe your soul which i feel like is very much so connected to and related to our conversation today about healing from the inside out from the top to the bottom um and this idea again of like pushing for um this idea of pushing for peace and pushing for joy which are inward to outward occurrences so soothe your soul I love that. Struggling. Okay. I am connected. Gemini energy. I feel like that's definitely a spiritual message. And I also feel like this idea of connectivity is connected spiritually and mind so your mind and your spirit are in alignment with each other your goals spiritually and your goals mentally are in alignment are connected are in harmony and are in balance i feel like that's a focus if it's not already where you are and that'll be a part of your healing journey for the week i am divinely guided i love that so this reminds me of a koala spirit as well a koala spirit really talks about you know um the universe basically or divide you know spirit having a plan the universe having a plan for you so i feel like that is your destiny that plan is called destiny and that plan you so your spirit your spiritual energy in combination with the universe before you were manifested um, into your corporeal form, created destiny for you. And that is your divine guide. That is so being connected spiritually, healing yourself from the inside out is how you get in alignment with that destiny and start living that destiny um, rather than living fate and being kind of tossed back and forth on the whims of fate. So. 
I can change my thoughts. I love that. It's so empowering because a lot of, like I mentioned before, the manifestation, what we manifest in our life has a lot to do with our thoughts. It starts in our mind space and, you know, changing those if they are not positive is really going to be a huge benefit for us as we move um, forward in our life journey. And then we have garlic. So service is uh, the guiding energy here for garlic. And what I feel like service is talking about for some of us is like, if you feel like your life is so difficult and in despair and all these sorts of challenging thoughts, um, the message that I'm receiving here is doing, you know, service to others. It, it puts life in perspective. So if we feel like we're just, like, oh, woe is me, everything is so difficult, you know, uh, you know, all of these sorts of conversations that we have with ourselves. Um, if we are able to put our woes in perspective, Often we can do that by serving others, by helping people that need our help. Um, and that will often, it's a humbling experience. Um, and prayerfully it puts us in a place of gratitude. And I feel like when we're in a place of gratitude, then we are more apt to find peace and find joy in that Space, especially if we struggle um, finding peace in our existence. So group number three, these are the messages that we have channeled here initially for you. Um, we are going to add some questions into our conversation today with our soulful truth cards. So these are questions that you're meant to take with you for the next week ahead, next seven to 10 days um, to do your journaling on, to meditate on. It's kind of a little bit of spiritual homework, if you will, just to kind of give you something to focus on for the week um, that you can kind of be working through or working on. And so the first question, am I communicating my needs? I feel like sometimes we think we're communicating our needs, but we're actually not voicing them. We are not communicating them sometimes in a way that those that we are trying to communicate with actually understand. So just, I feel like, are you getting the outcome? And I would even add effective. Am I effectively communicating my needs? Um, and that could also kind of alter a little bit how we approach it and how we think about it. Because we might be, for example, saying what we need to somebody that we are trying to get to listen. But if that, if they are not reacting in the way that we think we are, in the way that we, we would like them to, then perhaps another approach is necessary. So I feel like it's like communication is really about how how the other person is receiving your message and not only about how you are delivering your message. So bear that in mind as well. Our second question, am I getting enough rest to restore my energy and fully show up to my life? Sleep, man, get some sleep. <laughs> You are not the energizer bunny. You do not have to keep going and going and going. You need to stop, you need to rest, and you need to eat well and all of that good stuff. So you're not the energizer bunny. Do not feel like you have to be. And then the final question, how can I be more flexible right now? I love this. What are you trying to control? Maybe it's time to let go. Let love move through you today and trust the outcome will be for your highest good. I love that. Like, let love guide you. What are you being really rigid on? Like, I find myself doing this sometimes too with my daughter. Like, sometimes I get so intense about something that I tell her to do. And then it takes me a moment to, like, stop and think. And, like, is it really critical that she does exactly that in the exact way or order that you are wanting her to do it? 
Or is it really just about the outcome and you just want her, say, for example, to like get ready for the day? And who cares what order she does it in? Who cares if it's not the most efficient? <laughs> who cares if it's not the most efficient way to do it? You know, as long as it gets done. So I feel I, obviously I was triggered by that. But this idea of flexibility is so critical because sometimes we we get caught up on the process and not the outcome. And I feel like the message I mean, there's many messages of how you could perceive flexibility, but I feel like for some, the message here is about the outcome. Are you focused on the outcome or are you focused on the process? If you're focused on the process, sometimes you can get hung up on being too rigid about how you want things to be done and not about the outcome. Um, and that especially if you are dealing with other people, that sometimes um, their process or order of operations can be different and as long as it comes to the same conclusions as long as you're getting the same outcome that's really what the um, focus should be about so group number three these are the messages that i have channeled for you today i certainly hope this was helpful for you if it was make sure to drop a comment and let me know what resonated click like and subscribe to my youtube channel if you're not already a part of the kindred family would love to have you Connect with me on Facebook if you so feel like doing that. It's where I do my primary communications, my random one cards. I let you know when I get decks and other, you know, esoteric materials and other random things on Facebook. And also connect with me on Etsy. So if you are interested in checking out my Etsy shop, please do so. The description to all of these things will be in or the links to all of these things will be in the description so thank you so much beautiful soul for your time and energy today i appreciate it sharing space with you and i will see you in an upcoming reading bye